Hey everybody, welcome back to Retro Tech. So I am currently working on the Sony BVM D24 and I'm working on my cap kit for a lot of the boards. And I often get the question, how do I develop my cap kits? Where do I get the information from? And how do I go about ordering it? So I thought I'd make a video just real short here and show you how I go about it. That way, if you happen to be working on really any CRT and you can find the service manual for your specific CRT, then you can go through and do this exact same process that I'm going to do with the D24 boards, and then you can build a cap kit specific for your uh, monitor or television or whatever you have that might be a CRT that you need to recap. So again, first off, you need to start off with a PDF file of your manual. Uh, again, it needs to be the service and operations manual. For example, this manual has 239 pages in it. And I've gone ahead and looked ahead, but it, there is a table of contents. We're going to jump down here to page 148, which is the board I'm working on, which currently is this one I'm going to hold up right in front of you. This is the main power board for this BVM. It is, again, the D24E1WU. And this is a card that slides out. It's fully shielded with the main power input and power button on it. And it has quite a few electrolytic capacitors in it, again, that are over 20 years old. So I want to go ahead and recap them. And rather than just like looking inside here and trying to figure out what each cap value is, I'm going to go down to the specific spot on here that is for the G board. And this is the part slash components list. And if I look right here, it says G complete. So that's the beginning of the G board. And if you just scroll down a little bit, oops, went a little too far there. Uh, towards the bottom of the page, it will show you the capacitor list for it. And the capacitors always are going to start with the letter C. So we've got, and I just keep going a little too far, but down here towards the bottom, you can barely see it on your screen. I'll go to the next slide and it'll be up here towards the top. See how it says C16? So today we're just looking for the electrolytic capacitors on this particular board. So I'll come over here and I'll go C18 is an electrolytic capacitor, 47 microfarad, 50 volts with a 20% tolerance, which is a pretty standard, easy thing to order for an electrolytic capacitor uh, from a DigiKey, Mouser, any kind of capacitor resource that you have, you can go there and order that capacitor with just electrolytic capacitor and then type in that value and it'll pull up a bunch of different high quality replacements that you could use. So anyway, I go through here, I've got a reference to C18. So what I like to do now, you can do this by uh, just, you could do this just by using, say, a piece of paper, but I like to do it on these forms in Microsoft Word because that way I can save it. So again, that is C18. And then I'll go through here and it says C18 is at 47 microfarad, 50 volt tolerance. So 47 microfarad, 50 volt tolerance. And most capacitors nowadays are going to be 20% or better. So as long as you shoot for that 20% and always try to get like 85 degrees Celsius or 105 degrees Celsius, those are generally upgraded caps on what was originally done 20 years ago. So again, I'll put that in and then you just move on to the next one, skip down and the next electrolytic capacitor, for example, is C102. And there's the value for it. So that's what I'll go through here and do for this entire board. I'll go through and get all the C's that are electrolytic on this uh, listing here, put them in my Word document. And I bet this one's probably going to come out to about 40 um, different capacitors. And then I'll just take that list and I will go into, like I said, mouser.com and order it. But before I do that, I again can use Excel, for example, and let's say I've got multiple boards that are all different, but they're using a lot of the same capacitors, for example. You'll notice there's the same capacitors on different boards. So if you're working on one giant monitor and you want to order all the caps at once, rather than going in and individually ordering each board, you can save money by consolidating those orders. And uh, just, you know, because once you get over like quantity of 10 or more 
on the capacitors from the order wholesaler, you get a price decrease on your uh, parts. So you can go in here. I like to go into Excel and then, again, reset and, and put down here the values for every capacitor that is on the cap kit list. So I'll take and refer to my, sorry, wrong one. <laughs> I'll refer to my Sony uh, cap kit list, for example, and then I'll match that up and put that with the list of capacitors in here. And that way I can have a full, um, you know, like for example, if there's one 50 volt or one UF 50 volt on each board. Well, I could put two in here, and that way I only have to know to order two from the wholesale site. But then if you get to quantity over tens, you can start to actually save money if you're doing bigger cap orders. But I feel like that's a real easy way to go in and see, you know, then you could double check how many capacitors are in the kit total. So that's just, again, that's all I'm going to be working through. I just wanted to show you that real quickly. So, uh, Again, you can do all this by freehand, and I used to do it by hand years ago, but then it's better to save the data. So um, I like to go through and make a bunch of different cap kits, you know, and just do that. Now, there are some capacitors that might be changed and recommended by, say, the uh, manufacturer like Sony did have service bulletins that they would often announce. So unfortunately, we're probably not going to have access to a lot of those, and so Still, just going back and recapping it to the manufactured standard, it's going to be better off than just leaving it with the old capacitors. So if you do have access to those, then consider yourself very lucky and make the changes that the manufacturer recommends. Otherwise, just go through and cap it according to the parts list in the manual. But that's how you do it. You just get it straight out of the back pages of these service manuals. It literally lists it right here, and it lists the location. And then that location, for example, that C102, I can find that on the circuit board in here. And uh, that way, I can quickly remove all the capacitors at one time, go in there, and say, OK, I'm, I'm looking at C102 on here. And then I put it in the correct value and put the new cap in that way. And that's pretty much it. So I hope that helps a little bit. And I'll see you guys definitely next time with some more recapping and more retro content.